so we have a couple things for the old old business. Uh, the first one is uh, Kimberly McPhee, and I think Kimberly, you're on the call. There's Kimberly. Uh, so you're going to talk to us about some grant applications for the MDS yes. project. Um, thank you. So the current grant that we have that is funding the work on the South River ends June 30th. And there are several grant opportunities that are open right now that I wanted to talk to the board about. The first one is another, it's an MVP action grant. So that's what's funding the current work. The application is due May 7th at two o'clock. There is a 25% match for this grant, which will be covered if town meeting votes to approve the, the money for the purchase of the properties um, that are on the warrant. And what we'd like to do is to um, continue the permitting work that is needed for the Oxbow reconnection project and also look at permitting for the, the project on Johnny Bean Brook. We'd also like to pick up or continue the uh, analysis of the hydraulic model work that was done on Pumpkin Hollow Brook and upstream of the Conway Center Bridge. Uh, there's more investigation that can be done to identify uh, additional projects that would provide more flood protection for the 100 year flood. And if the planning board is interested, which I'll talk to them about this, if they want to continue work, working with the COG on the River Corridor Protection Overlay District. So that's the first opportunity that um, is available. So I wanted to come before the board to to see if you would support submitting that application. And if so, um, I would need to get a, a copy of the town meeting warrant if it's available right now, or if it's not just uh, an email to me that includes the language that's, that's on the warrant for the property acquisition. Um, and really, um, just the language on the warrant that's not passed yet is that good enough for the application yep and there's, yep. there's a couple there's another place on the warrant where we're actually including special money for matching grants is that the, is that the CPA not matching no. oh is that wrong tom uh that's that's not relevant to this okay um and then a letter of support for the grant application, which I would write, but I would need either the board to um, authorize uh, Ross or Tom before he leaves to, to sign the letter. Um, and then the third part for this MVP application is it's an online application and um, it has to be signed like using your finger on the screen. <laughs> and so I sent an email asking if I could sign on behalf of the town, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to. So that means that once the application is done and ready to submit, I'm gonna probably have to you know, physically come to Conway and sit down with Ross or you, Bob, as the chair to to actually sign the application so it can be submitted. We could certainly do that. I, I sign a lot of things using DocuSign. That won't work or is that something different? No, it's something different. It's, um, it, yeah, I, this is the, they updated their, their process and this is what they're requiring. So, um, my signature with my finger is pretty unreadable, but <laughs> but, but everybody seems to accept it. So right. I know. I mean, I could probably sign your name, and yeah, you, they uh, wouldn't even know. But 
Anyway, um, <laughs> so I'm just kidding. Um, so those are, so if, if the town is interested in pursuing um, this application, which is due in two weeks, those are the, the three things that I need. A, a copy of the warrant, if it's available, uh, and that mentions the articles for CPA and for the, the other um, language related to the property acquisition, then a signed letter of support, and then just coordinating with um, Ross to, to sign and submit the, the application, or you, Bob. I'm gonna make a motion that we, you know, that we pursue these grant applications and, and all of Kimberly's requests. Uh, what do you think? Well, can, can I ask a question? Um, yeah. And so my, my understanding, Kimberly, is all these projects that you mentioned, the Horseshoe, the um, uh, Pumpkin Hollow study, the uh, uh, Johnny Breen Brook, that all of those projects are going to be completed without town, without any increase to the town assessments. Well, so that, that is certainly what we're working towards. The other grant program that is also open right now and the application is due on the 30th of June, um, I think I'm able to meet the match requirement for the 319 grant application, which is the same program that funded the South River Meadow project with the, um, if we get the new, new MVP grant or the existing grant. So I'm trying to structure it so there's no additional money required from the town. And then the third um, opportunity that's open right now is a FEMA Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities, their new brick program. And that RFR hasn't been released yet, but what they're doing now is asking for a statement of interest and MEMA, the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency actually has a consultant uh, on retainer until the end of the fiscal year that will do the benefit cost analysis work for free. So the FEMA, I've talked to the MEMA staff about this, you know, the more complicated project, the Oxbow, the dry hydrant, the bank stabilization. And they really were very intrigued by it. And so I think that's an opportunity to get the benefit cost analysis done without any cost to the town. And then um, in terms of the match that's required, I sent an email today and I said, when does the um, match period open? And, and I'm gonna confirm this because I fell off my chair, but the response I got back was, oh, there's no, you know, there's no like start period for that. If you can show that you've been working on this project, they will give you credit for previous work. So I'm gonna confirm that. And if that's the case, again, I'll try to structure it so that there's not more money that the town needs to put towards, towards these projects. And so circling back to the MVP application that is due on the 7th, if town meeting says, no, we're not going to authorize uh, the funding, you know, for the purchase of, of these properties, then obviously the town would withdraw their MVP application because that's the match for the grant. But we could still move forward with the 319 application and, you know, the statement of interest isn't gonna cost the town anything. I'm for FEMA. I might need, again, um, that's an online form. And so I might need to ask Ross or Bob to submit it if, if they won't let me do it on behalf of the town. Um, but I was going to try to get that done in the next week or two, because I want to get the town in the queue for the benefit cost analysis. I guess, Kimberly, when, when you get the, the language from the, our warrant that that I'm sure is going to be sent to you momentarily or today or tomorrow or whatever. The, mm -hmm. um, if you could just really look at it carefully and make sure that it's adequate for your purpose, because um, with, there's two 
at least that there's a there's a percentage perhaps that some of it might you know i mean there, there's a possibility that some of it might not get voted mm. on it, some of it might not pass but some of it might but the rest might and just want to make sure that what you ha are, intend to can survive um even a partial no vote um, if as regards to another premises that's also going to be on there. Well, I appreciate that um, distinction, Phil, bec because I will, I, I will try to structure it so that if we don't get the entire amount, that it, the most important part to keep advancing is the permitting. So I'll try to uh, structure it. So do, are you, can you say, um, are you thinking that maybe the CPA money would pass, but the other ones wouldn't? Or can you give me some idea of how you think it might break down? Um, I, I just know that there's one part of the whole plan as currently constituted that does have some community opposition. Okay. That, that there's two other parts to the plan as represented on the warrant, at least, that I'm, I'm not aware of any opposition to. Okay. So can you two, attach a dollar figure to, to like what I could it work the, it with? It was the two, the, the, on, on the town meeting warrant, it was the two smaller parcels mm -hmm. um, that I'm, I'm not aware of any opposition to, and I would expect a near unanimous vote on it. Okay. Um, for it. The, okay. The other, the other one, the bigger, the bigger potential purchase, um, I am aware of opposition. Let's just put it that way. Okay. So, um, so that, that just makes it uncertain. The outcome is right. uncertain. <laughs> right. So, all right. So I'll second your motion, Bob. Thank you. So all in favor. Eric, are you there? I see you're muted and you're invisible. So make sorry, I'm here. My husband just brought me dinner and you don't want to see me eating. So. Uh, that's all right. <laughs> So did you hear that? You know, we're we're voting on whether to support Kimberly's. Uh, yeah, no, I, yeah, I know. I've been here the whole time. I just yep, didn't yep. want you to watch me. <laughs> so we're looking for a uh, yes or no. Aye, yes. Aye, okay. And Phil says yep. aye, and I say aye. So Kimberly, you have our support. Oh, great. Thank you so much. Now, for I understand that that Tom's last day is is fast approaching, and then Ross, are you working? every day, um, like I just, if if I need to get in touch with you, are there days where you wouldn't be available? I am generally working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. More or less nine to five. Um, it shifts based upon how many night meetings we're doing, um, and that type of thing. But I will probably be checking email at least for the rest of the week, so. Okay, so maybe Bob, I should coordinate with you. That'd be fine. The grant yeah. application is due on a Friday by two. Maybe I should be coordinating with you to get your finger signature. So I should be expecting to be signing an application on May 7th. That'd be fine. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now, would I do that in our town hall or what we're. You're going to send me something from home that I would then send on, or yeah, I'll I'll coordinate with you because it there. I I don't want to bore people with all of like the logistics, but like I can't upload any of the attachments till we're ready to submit it. It's just going to be a nightmare. It might be better actually if you come to the Cog office. I could do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, right. it's fine. So we'll coordinate then on that. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone. Bye, Kimberly. Hey, Kimberly, Bye. if you want a preview of what Phil was talking about, we're about to talk about our, our town meeting warrant. So, you know, if you just stay on the line for just a second, but it's up to All you. All right. But, but our, our next item on the agenda is to talk about the warrant and, and the slight change that we were just discussing in a meeting an hour ago. Ah. Uh, so, you're asking a lot of Kimberly, though. I mean, you're asking for like the public immediate uh, corrections, which is just that's a lot. That's a lot. She 
she had it set up so that she could work on it and properly in her office, you know. And that, now you're asking for public immediate. No, 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 I don't think I her to listen. That's all she has to do. She oh, just, just a, she, well, the slight change that we were just talking about. All right. So, Tom, do you want to read that slight change that we're proposing for the warrant, which we thought was complete, but almost? Yes. Um, Article 21 originally read, to see if the town will transfer the remainder of the Cricket Hill Road Special Revenue Fund, approximately $20,450, and the remainder of the sale of real estate, Chapter 44, Section 3, Special Revenue Fund, approximately $84,695 to the general fund for purchasing properties along the South River for conservation or flood mitigation purposes or to take any action relative thereto. And the idea was to make this tied specifically to 69 Main Street so that this money would, would be um, available only for, for that project um, and so the way it reads now is much more like the um, the other two parcels, the Waldo and Bay articles, which are uh, articles uh, 22 and 23, I believe. And so the proposed rewording is to see if the town will transfer the remainder of the Cricket Hill Road Special Revenue Fund, approximately $20,450, and the remainder of the sale of real estate, Chapter 44, Section 3, Special Revenue Fund, approximately $84,695, as a portion of the cost for the public purpose of purchasing a parcel of land owned by South River Trust, which address is 69 Main Street, and more particularly described as Assessor's Map 102, Lots 2 and 2.1 as part of the South River Flood Resiliency Project. And further, to authorize the select board to acquire in fee simple by purchase deed, gift, eminent domain, or otherwise said property or take any action relative thereto. So that, that makes it um, very specific to, um, to 69 Main Street. Kimberly, did you, see, uh, we're assuming that it was some tiny, some piece of this, or, or is, was it, was it the, the CPA money that, that you thought you might be able to use to, as a matching grant? Um. So uh, I was thinking that it would be what Tom just described, then the two warrant articles for the Waldo and Bay, and then the CPA money. So it was around 150,000. Is that yep. correct? So 155, yeah. Yeah. And how much would you need for matching funds? Well, or, or I mean, really nothing if, if you believe that our work to date will cover it. Well, that was for the 319 grant or the FEMA grant for this application that's due on the 7th. Um, I was assuming that town meeting would pass all articles and that the 155,000 would be available for the grant, but based on, you know, the new knowledge I have now, I'm going to be careful to make sure that the permitting task can be done as a standalone task if the whole package doesn't pass. And if none of it passes, then, you know, we're done with that and we just focus on the 319 grant and the FEMA grant. So you're just looking at the money as a whole? But that's yes. Great. So, Erica or Phil, do you have comments about the proposed change to Article 21? 
Yeah, I'm just it, it, it just it reads substantially different than articles 22 and 23 with authorizing the select board to acquire in fee simple by purchase deed gift or eminent domain. Um, we're not using that language to describe the other two properties. Is there a reason for that? Uh, yes, I believe we are. Well, it, that, that, that's, that's what I have. And the reason is that because we know this is a more complicated property than the others? No, I, I think the main change is the source of funding. The, the, the rest of it, the rest of the language is meant to be pretty much the same. Well, I'm the most recent draft of the of the warrant articles, articles 22 and 23, which reference um, the Waldo property and um, Mary Bowes property. Those don't say anything about authorizing the select board to acquire in fee simple by purchase, deed, gift, or eminent domain. Well, they they do say that in the version of the warrant that Tom handed out today. From. They do. Yeah, they do. That's how they start out. That's. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was just. I was looking at the. Okay. Never mind. I'm sorry. I was... Okay. I don't have any questions then. Uh, uh, just... I have a quick question for Kimberly while she's still here. Sure. Which was on the status of the appraisals. So, because um, we uh, really need, I mean, it's like critical. We need to know how much these are. Right. And um, I, I just, I emailed the attorney uh, late today and asked if there was any way that we could get them before uh, town meeting. So we'll see. Um, I can't. The, the attorney is the so this attorney doing the appraisals? Well, no. We I the cog hired an attorney who's hired the appraisal and the title search. Okay. Yeah. Because I mean, this all could go down. You know, if we don't know how much they are, we're just right. trying to you know kind of keep these amounts that we have. And and limp well, I said, oh, it's just like five weeks, but. <laughs> you know, no, it's I mean, I'll, I'm going to um, try to push to have this done um, as, as soon as possible. And I've already talked to the appraiser once because he had some question, you know, clarifying questions. So hopefully he's been working on these. Are there any more questions about the language in Article 21? Yeah, I've got just one question. Um, it says, as part of the South River Flood Resiliency Project, does that limit the use of this lot to just the flood mitigation, or does it would it allow the town to put a building on that on that site? I mean, that was a question of Tom. But, yeah, um, I don't know. Um. I, I don't know, but the work that was, the project that is proposed is actually on the portion of the property that is on, off Academy Hill Road because the river bisects the property. Right. Yes, I understand that's for the flood mitigation piece, mm -hmm. but if the town wanted to put something on the Main Street side of that, mm. I just don't want this article to box that out. Mm -hmm. You mean that is the word that like or other uses or yeah that would I think that would that's the intent of what I'm trying to say yeah, yeah. I like that as part of the South River Flood Resiliency Program and other uses and then further authorize the select board I think it might help. Um, drum up a, appreciation for the warrant article. Well, like Joe said, he'd be happy to see a, you know, a public park there. 
um, if that's yeah, even a park, whatever you well, want. I mean, yeah. it might pose might raise the question, and what other public purposes do you have in mind? Right. But someone needs to address that. But I just don't want to prevent you from this. doing something on the front side of that parcel. Yeah, so, no, yeah. I agree. I like that. I like that wording. So, what do you think, Tom? Did, did you could you add that in? Sure. Sure. So with that, and, change. J Janet, I got, I, I sort of just wanted to run by, you know, what, what, because now that the article 21 is, is specific to 69 main street, does the article 20, your, your CPA section a, do you want to delete the reference to 69 main street? Well, we need, we, we may need both parts of that money, you know, as we talked now okay. and, and it, and further complicating. I don't think you can use the CPA money, uh, you know, for something else other than open space and river, you know, river protection. Well, but, historic, but, historic preservation, open well, space. Well, yes, yes, but we're not, you know, of the, it's under the open space category. Um, but we're going to need all this money f for the open space, i.e. flood portion project, so it should be no problem. So right. what would be the advantage of removing 69 Main Street? Well, all, you know, I don't have the warrants in front of me. I just want to make sure that, that, that it's understood that we can use, you know, both of these pots of money yeah. That's together great. for the same purposes. Then, then you want it left the way it is then. So, um, and my other question, Janet, would was that, um, you know, right now, you Article Twenty, your the the CPA thing has both Section A and Section B has references to sixty nine Main Street. The all the other that so and that's the introduction to the town of that topic. Mm -hmm. the The rest of it is you know the rest of it dealing is is Article Twenty One, Twenty Two, and Twenty Three. Do you want to be first on that topic, or do you want to be not first on that topic? Oh, good. Good question. Probably, probably we, we do the introduction on the smaller properties. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Yeah. So article 22 should be 20, article 23 should be 21, article 21 should be 22, and whatever I missed should be 23. Sure. Article 20. So go. Damn, so go small to again. large. I had it perfect. I said it perfectly too. Now I can't remember. Um, yeah. Which one comes first? Just, just, just name it. Which one comes first? comes first? Twenty-two. Twenty-two is first. Waldo. Use the yeah. use the names. Yeah. Waldo, Waldo comes Waldo first. Waldo is first. Bay is second. Yeah, Bay is second. Sixty-nine Main Street, or you know, is third. Okay. And the, and and the CPA, CPA is four. Is fourth. And and we need um. We need select board recommendations on the three purchases. Just so you know. So we need votes. So it says select board recommendation, this, that, and the other. So someone needs to make a motion on each article. So, so we're, and, and why don't we do it by the name, just like we did. So we need a select board recommendation on buying Waldo. So th this is not like a motion. We just need you to say you support it or you don't, you recommend it or you don't recommend it. I, I support that Warren article. As it's we've been. already voted for them all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I I did not have that recorded. I'm sorry. Yeah, recorded here. Yeah. All right. Well, you can do it as one vote if you. Uh, but if if you would indulge me, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Well, the two that we don't have votes on are buying the two small properties, Waldo and Bay. So I support them both. I support that's them both. a motion. That's a se second from Phil, and that's a roll call vote. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. That's the way I heard it. <laughs> okay. So, Kimberly, aren't you glad you stayed? <laughs> I'm always glad to come to Conway. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. So, good night. So now that we've made any other modifications to the warrant, or can we pass the warrant and then we'll be done with it? Um, my, Tom, when I was going through that, I I took a look at. Our, I thought I thought for Article Three for the Conway the Conway gener, the grammar school generator, I thought that was coming out of the grammar school stabilization fund. Yes, it is. That's what the motion will be. Uh, okay, so it doesn't say that in the article. Gotcha. No, gotcha. the the articles are written as broadly as possible in case That's last great. minute financial changes need to I be gotcha. made. The, okay, mo- I, the motions I, I are as again. specific should, as possible. I should have remembered that. I'll send the motions to you in a week or so, so you can sure we've got all the right wording great and anything else or can, can we pass this and yeah i think we're good yeah uh, i think phil's nodding so i'm going to make a motion that we that we pass the warrant as modified today changing the order of uh, and the wording of uh, one of those articles and, and a little bit of uh, the order and uh, did I get a second? Second. So all in favor, aye. 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 I say aye. Phil's nodding his head. Is that an aye? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, the only the, the only other thing that I noticed was that we're we're not we didn't recommend do a recommendation on any of the bylaws. And did we did we always not do I, I thought we used to weigh in on those things. I suppose nobody wants to hear anymore. I don't know. <laughs> Um, no, I, I no, I, I I think since you submitted it, you should recommend it. That would be articles twenty five and twenty six for the uh, date of the annual town meeting and changing board of selectmen to select board. So a motion for the um, select board to recommend those would be in order. I think. I see yes. them not recommended, or I see them without anything recorded. You're right. Yes, they're orphaned right now. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I will. I'll make a motion that we um, support Article 25 and 26 and 26. We try them both together. Yep. I'll say I'll second your uh, motion. Aye. I say aye. Erica says aye. Phil says aye. Three zero. Did we ever vote on? Did we ever vote on twenty seven? Uh, typically, the select board has not voted on planning board articles, but you could if you wanted. No, twenty seven oh, is right. another. Oh, yeah. It, yeah, this related. It to has a place for it. Yeah. Um, I could either. Uh, Take it out, or you could vote to recommend. Recommend. It's a select board. To select man, to select yeah, board. It's related to twenty six. I'll second if Phil recommends. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, did somebody make a motion? I think Phil I. Did. I seconded. Phil made a motion, seconded. All in favor, say aye. And roll yeah. call. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Phil says aye. aye. Roll, roll call. Yeah. Erica, thank you. Yes. Says I, and I, and I say I. Article. So, so what else have we left that, out here? That was twenty-seven, Louise. Twenty-seven, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're good. We already voted so, for the whole thing. We, we changed it after we we sure. changed it after we voted yes for it, but but that's well, okay. The motion was as as amended tonight. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Great. 
So the next item on our agenda, we are going to talk about the, uh, the the town administrator. Now we put this on the agenda so that we could continue the discussion of uh, Thursday that we had Thursday night if we didn't finish it on Thursday because we have to submit the uh, the agenda before we had that discussion. So um, I don't think we need to discuss anymore. I don't think we need to discuss anymore. So I think we could just call this an announcement. Yes. And we did yes. that earlier that that uh, that we all mutually uh, that the Veronique is our first choice for the candidate, and that we're going to begin contract negotiations uh, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping they'll be successful, and she'll hopefully be on board July first or sooner. <laughs> or sooner, yeah. Okay. So the next item on our meeting to the uh, on our agenda is to talk about whether or not to buy clickers, whether or not to buy devices that we can use for voting at the annual town meeting. And I'll, I'll just make a note that um, the uh, Capital Improvements Planning Committee does not have a quorum at this time. Can we make this decision without them? Yeah. Okay. We believe so. We just thought that we gave them an FYI last week that this was coming up, and and if they wanted to comment, they could. If not, they don't need to. But, um, that cost a little under ten thousand dollars to buy these. We have the money in COVID money, which mm -hmm. is kind of exactly what COVID money is aimed at, and uh, uh, so it wouldn't cost the town anything. Correct. Um, I I used these last year, Sterling, and I helped Stowe use it, and they are really simple, fantastic. The voters loved them. The moderator loved them. I talked to Jimmy this morning. He's in favor of it. Um, obviously, Laurie, the town clerk, is in favor because she's done all the work on getting us to this point of the quote. But these systems allow anonymous voting. So the people that are concerned about their vote being seen, it's anonymous. Um, you cannot click a thousand times if you have an active thumb. It's only your last click that counts. You could change your vote, but again, it's only your last click that counts. Um, for, for votes that require a two thirds or four fifths majority, the system makes that calculation and will show that to the moderator or, or town clerk and they can say right then and there. This avoids the raising of hands and having tellers going back and forth. Um, I'm gonna also, since it's CARES money, arrange for a technician from Meridia to, to be there for our first town meeting to be sure that we've got all the radio receivers working right. Um, the software on the tabulator working right, but it's a really nice way to speed up town meeting. So, Ross, I got a, I got a question about this. So I've been thinking about this. As I, I tried to look whether there was any data that anybody accumulated to track whether there's any differences in the rate of passage of town weight uh, meeting article uh, warrant articles <laughs> af after something like this has been adopted versus before. Because there is something to be said for the uh, for, for, for voting in such a way as all your friends and neighbors can see how you vote, and when and and normally you know the, normally we the, the decision to to whether to make a secret vote is sort of like a separate thing that is reserved for only those most contentious of debates. And is is undertaken very uh, rarely because it's such a big time uh, uh, suck. But and so so there's this like conformity to it all. Um, but I I've always thought it's one of the reasons that we pass almost everything at town meeting <laughs> is because um, you know you, that the reasons that most people say no have our, our basic pocketbook issues that sort of pale in comparison to the uh, opinion of you that your neighbors and friends have. Um, so, so, so I, like, I, I wonder whether when you make when we make everything a secret ballot, whether there's just going to be more no votes in general, and whether um, it might 
become more difficult to get things done through town or get things passed at town meeting. And I, 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 I do think that that's a possibility. Um, so, 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 but, it, but it would save a lot of time. And being there for a long time aggravates people enough to make them want to vote no so they get out of there faster. And so I think there, there are, there are counter... At, there, it's a complicated set of factors to consider. Um, I feel like this is a technology that would actually encourage people who don't can currently participate in town government to, to participate. Um, and I'm all for anything that encourages civic participation. Um, and, and this is this is like the only vote that's not um, a, like a secret private vote. This is the only this is the only place where I vote in any capacity where everyone can see how I vote. Um, and I still participate in town government. Um, I'm you know, I mean, I, I've heard Lori's arguments about how this would vastly um, simplify the process and the paperwork and, and everything that, that goes into town meeting. And I'm absolutely in support of this. So, Ross, I heard you uh, pipe in just a minute ago, but do you want to give Lori a chance to say something? Or do you want to go? And then well, well Lori, did, Lori, did all the, Lori did all the research. She got the quote. So, um, yes, and, if she's got anything she wants to and, say, she's here. You, so the, these are these would be battery powered, correct? Yes, they run off of two um, like thumbnail batteries, disc bat, the wafer batteries. So, so this is Lori before us signing up for the work, the additional work of checking the batteries every year. Absolutely, um, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I mean, one of my biggest things is I feel that a lot of people at town meeting either don't vote or they vote dishonestly because of what the guy up the street thinks. And we want an honest vote. We want people to feel comfortable telling us what they want, not saying, well, I don't want my neighbor to know that I'm for the marijuana farm, or I don't want the highway department to know that I don't want them to get that new truck. We want honest, we want comfort, we want accurate calculations and permanent records of every article vote. I mean, that's, that's, uh, you know, I actually think that that's one of the secrets to highway departments always getting their way that, <laughs> that pe pe people they're in the back of everybody's mind, you know, that the highway, the highway the boss is staring, look, you know, standing up at the mic, mic microphone asking for money. At the back of the, everybody's mind is like, boy, how vulnerable is my mailbox to a to a just a slightly above a slightly above rock. speed snowplow? Um, and just well, did you notice any change at Stowe or Sterling? No, both town meetings. Um, I would say ninety percent of all the articles passed, just as they would with a voice count or show of hands and, and colored cards. Um, I don't think it shifted anything. It made it quicker. You didn't have to have recounts. Um, it definitely would make it quicker. And I, you know, when when you look at our town meetings, I've always thought that it's that one hour, one and a half hour, two hour mark where people start to get feisty. And that's because that's the length of time you can sit in those all steel folding chairs before your butt really starts to hurt. And 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 that's a whole nother thing that if that that it that. Um, that, that's like a long-term thing, but we have chairs. Those chairs are um, older than any of us, I think, I, th and they need to be replaced. They, you, they're really uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, really. yeah, let's just start with the clickers for now. Let's okay. start with the clickers. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'm hearing a lot of support for clickers. So I make the motion that we. Um, the cares money is there. It's a yeah. good thing. Did yeah. Lori want to say something? No, I, I. I'm just, you know, again, really think that this would be a huge help with the town meeting. And it's not only in the speed, but it is that permanent record of every article vote from this point forward. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't, it, it's there to look back at for when we need it, an exact count of how many people voted for each article. Uh, the, other, the thing that I thought, the, the, the amount that, that you stated, so that did not include any replacement batteries. 
Correct. But you know, right. they, will, they will all come with, with full battery charges. You can buy these wafer batteries in bulk. So you're not like buying two at a time in a hardware store for five bucks each. You're buying them, I think they were like less than a buck each. Um, I believe in bulk. They're good for about three years, the ones they come with. Am I correct? Correct. And there's usually a window on them that tells you what the battery strength is. There's a little screen that will tell you that your signal, your vote has been counted. Mm -hmm. It's probably comparable to what we spend on colored index cards. <laughs> That'd be my guess. <laughs> Good point. So I'm going to second Erica's motion. And, and, uh, and we need to do a roll call vote. So, Eric, I assume you're going to say aye. aye. I vote I aye. say aye. And Phil is nodding his head, so I'm going to take that as an aye. So Thank you, a Phil. Vote. Thank um, you. Lori's, yeah, quote yeah. Was, Lori's quote was for 300 clickers. I think she yes. said the highest turnout was like 238. Mm -hmm. um, people seem to think the turnout's more like 120 or something, but is everybody comfortable with buying the 300? 300, yeah. So we might have we might not have enough when people find and out that clickers. If, I thought about that too. That and if if we I I think that there that there was one town meeting that was closer to four hundred, um, and that was the um, safe city bylaw, the first one. Two hundred and thirty eight. Go around. Two thirty eight. Two thirty eight. Well, but but if if there is more than three hundred, can the first three hundred with a clicker vote first, then. Um, there be uh, some of them be, be allotted to the people that haven't voted yet. I think or, what we we would do, I'll work with Lori, but we'll have a backup plan probably with colored cards. So that when the 301st person shows up to register, they get a colored card and we know where they sit so we can make a point of counting them. But I mean, you could buy 350 if you want. I mean, you could buy 400 if you want. The, yeah. clickers is, the clickers is where the cost, the majority of the cost is. Yeah. The clickers are $30 a piece. I think we could probably start with the 300 that you priced out and see what town meeting looks like this year. And, and, and like Ross said, have a backup plan for- We'll have a backup plan. Yeah. Find out, find out what the resale value is just in case this year, everybody votes no on everything. So. <laughs> I don't think so. so. So, Phil, I heard two yes votes, but I haven't heard your vote yet. So, yes, yes, you're yes. Yes. Same. yes, right? No, yes. no, I didn't hear yes. that. No, I, I, um, it will be less annoying. the the dead The dead spaces are, 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 uh, are, 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 are you know, I definitely desire to be rid of them, and that, right. this will do it. But we will get big support. How often do we pass a vote because the small group happens to yell louder than the large group? Yeah. Well, I've well, definitely we, been at town meetings where there's been a recount because it's it's really it's not obvious to you know the right. moderator and this would be. Yeah, so Jimmy's very much in favor. So yeah, we will so. get this. We will get this rolling. I want to thank Laurie for doing the homework and, and yeah, lining up you, the Laurie. vendor. Yes, and, and thank Ross, you, Ross, this, for Ross, this, this was your I I remember you mentioning this in your interview. Yeah. Yes. It and was what we did last year because of the unusual circumstances. Um, and it made an easy decision when you're going to get this back from CARES Act. Mm -hmm. yeah. So good. good. We'll make it happen. Very good. Thank you. So our meeting is stretching on here. So so the, the, the next issue under new business is uh yeah. Uh, presentation, I think, by Janet, but you're going to talk about some open space issues. Or Pixie, are you going to do that presentation? Um, I'm I'm happy to, Janet. Where do you stand on that? Oh, can she uh, hear? Janet's me? muted. Janet, you muted. I can see Janet. She's moving, but. Yeah. Somebody knock on. All right. Okay. Yeah. The, appro the approved plan for the town South River Meadow includes benches. We have one so far, and now we are going to be gifted with another one. Um, Pixie, do you just want to briefly explain? 
Yes, um, I think uh, most of you here have been involved in some capacity, but it is our joy to be able to honor Judy Laughlin, Bob Armstrong's beautiful wife. Um, we had a very generous response to uh, a fundraiser and we will be able to uh, install a stone bench. It's similar to the one that's down there now. Uh, I think the likelihood of its installation would be more like the beginning of June. But with Janet's help and Michelle Turi, um, they've been very welcoming and we did a, uh, a visit. Uh, we're very mindful of the restrictions and the enhancements that you want uh, at the South, South River Meadow. So we are, it was, it's helping us heal and we certainly hope it's helping uh, Bob and his family to heal. Really wonderful. Hmm. So I get so. Uh, are, are you looking for support from the town? Do we? Well, have... I, I don't. Uh, it, you know, just a formal acceptance of the gift. You have you have my support totally. Yes, thank you. Awesome. Okay, so, and then I had just a couple of other little informational items. Um. I had emailed a, 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 a graphic to Tom and Louise. They sent it out to us, Janet. Yeah, oh, oh, okay, so the sign. So yeah. I just want you to know that's coming. That's what's called the main sign um, for the entrance to the meadows. And we hope to have that up this summer. It's really beautiful. It's beautiful. Who made that? Is that your? Well, book? it's so far. It's um, it's Michelle's design. Michelle, yeah. Michelle, it's... Michelle's our artist. Yeah. And but of course we're working with a whole community, a committee. You know, a volunteer carpenter was Tom Donovan. You know, we got to do the board, and oh, we might have a post from Jack Lockhead, and then Bob <laughs> Compton. We got to hang it on something. So. Well, uh, there it is. Oh, it is. lovely. There we go. Um, there is just, there is, we got CPA money for, there are other signs. There's going to be interior signs, uh, interpretive signage, um, and some plant ID signs, just so you know, there's, this is the main sign versus the other ones are coming eventually. And then the last item, just informational, was uh, on the regional pollinator plan, which we're working with FERCOG, got a whole bunch of towns in the region and they're doing really sort of large scale planning. Uh, and um, we've selected, and they wanna do it on town property where this new pollinator corridor, whatever it is, is gonna be. And so we ID'd the Bigelow property for that, which uh, the town owns right across from the meadow. <laughs> Um, and um, so that's in the works and we'll see, you know, what that plan looks like and yeah. how to go forward. So that, that's kind of exciting. Thank and that's you. it. Okay. So uh, we also are going to have a discussion with Megan. I see Megan here. I don't, uh, you're muted, but Megan is going to talk to us about a Habitat for Humanity uh, house that, that, uh, you are going to build or you, I, I don't know the details. Sure. So my name is Megan. I'm the executive director at Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity. And um, uh, we uh, were gifted this past summer a building lot in the town of Con Conway on uh, South Deerfield Street. So we are in the process of um, uh, just starting to plan to build a single family house on the land. Um, it's very early stages for us, but we were able to submit an application to the CPA committee um, for some funding to help with the construction. And uh, so it will be on the, should be a, on your town meeting warrant, which I see you guys were going over this evening. Um, and part of what, uh, typically we look to do whenever we're partnering with the town is to go through the Department of Housing and Community Development's local initiative program. Uh, that is what would get this house that we built on the state affordable housing inventory. 
and they provide technical assistance to both the town and to Habitat as the developer, providing template documents for things like the affordable housing deed restriction that would make it a permanently affordable uh, home into the future. Um, so the way Habitat works is we um, raise money in the community, both we're asking for these town funds, but also private donors. And then we build a house with a combination of volunteers and paid subcontractors and we and the homeowners themselves, the future homeowner themselves. And then we sell the house to that future homeowner with an affordable mortgage. I'm wondering if they've ever built a home with something like uh, the Franklin County Tech School. Uh, We've definitely worked with them. Sorry, I just didn't want you guys all to have to listen to my uh, answering machine turning okay. on there. It's the danger of uh, doing these things from home. Um, so um, we've worked with Franklin Tech in the past. This um, pre pan we did a house in Greenfield and they weren't able to work with us because they, had they were doing their own project out in, I think, Irving. Um, so they're, all the trades were busy. Um, we've worked a little bit more with Smith Vocational. Um, they, they're working right now doing plumbing and uh, on a couple of our houses. We've also worked with the electrical and the forestry departments as well as carpentry. So we will definitely reach out to Franklin Tech and see where they are. COVID obviously has uh, been a complication, but hopefully by the time we're building this house, some of that will be back to normal. Yeah. So do you need anything from us? I mean, other than passing 25,000 in CPA money <laughs> and our warrants. That would be lovely. Um, yeah. That would be a huge help to the budget. Um, and I just would, if the CPA money passes, then I would be coming back with you. The local initiative program has it, the application is a joint application between the town and the developer, which would be Habitat. And we would write most of the content of the application, but it would be something that you would be signing onto with us and we'd be making that joint application. So I wanted to give you guys a heads up about this. So since there's an article on the warrant and see if you were amenable to uh, going through that process which would be after if the if the money passes. Of course. Yeah, extremely amenable. And, 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 oh, I mean, great. We definitely lack affordable housing here in Conway, and this would be a great, uh, you know, practically first step. Uh, and we'd love to see more. It's it's something that our planning mm -hmm. board has been talking about for a while. And we drive by that property, I think, all of us like frequently, and would love to see. Um, you know, a family living there in a house. Yeah. The, the, yeah, the so CPA money, so the, okay. the CPA money that is given um, to the future homeowner would result in a lien um, for that money, I believe, right? So this yes. is this is what we would be doing the local initiative program for. So it, there would be a deed restriction on the house that would be in perpetuity it basically set, sets a maximum sale price for the house. So the homeowner is getting a mortgage. They are buying the house, but they can't resell it for market value. So if the average home price in Conway is 250000 and they buy it for 150000 they can't just turn around and sell it the next day for profit. Um, but they can sell it if, you know, maybe their kids move or, you know, they get a new job and they, all the reasons that people move. Um, and when they go to sell it, they would contact Habitat and the town. And we would say um, Habitat would calculate the maximum sale price and um, help them market it to another low income buyer. So there's a formula in the deed restriction to calculate what that maximum resale price is. And the town habitat and DHCD at the state would be listed as the <coughs> monitoring agents, uh, which is the term basically to say that we would enforce the seed restriction. Um, typically habitat does the legwork of that when a resale comes up 
um, but the town has to sign a letter at that point saying, yes, you know, proceed. Um, that, and I think it also, the reason they put the debt, the town in there is it's a deed restriction in perpetuity. And, you know, we're a nonprofit organization. I hope we're here 50 years from now, but I know the town will be here 50 years from now. So I think that's one of the reasons those legal documents mentioned both. Yeah. So I'd just like to welcome Habitat for Humanity to Conway. And uh, thank you. Um, yeah, very excited. Yeah. And, you know, hope just when if there's ever anything that you're doing in the future, just always think of Conway because you know, just <laughs> why not us? Why not us? That's what I always say to everybody. Don't forget Conway. Um, is um is Stacy Metzger still on your board? She is, yeah. I used to she's, work. With her. Um, she was the chair of the, but she's um uh to and not done with her term yet, but no longer the board president. But she's yeah. great. Yeah, uh, she is. I'm very grateful for her guidance. She's wonderful. Yeah. Just, no, welcome just, to Conway. Thank you. So, so I I I, I, I reached out to Megan on Friday because I had the idea of combining this project with my long-term fantasy of um, having Conway welcome a refugee family or two or three or four or five. And, um, um, but it, it, but it, it, they require circles of care. We don't, we don't have Habitat for Humanity doesn't do circles of care, but a healthy volunteer core of people well-organized could Pixie. <laughs> do you see the um, team that put put the playground in years ago <laughs> yeah um, but yeah but, but no we, so, we definitely yeah. have had refugee um at, apply but it's usually after they've been here a year or two so if they have um income and a job and now they're looking for more permanent housing uh, but that initial set you know support network that's needed isn't within our scope yeah and my interest in this are strictly selfish i, I go to a lot of potlucks in town and that when you have refugee families you bring different cuisines in <laughs> and that promises to be better potlucks so um it's better for everybody yeah phil's in it for the food <laughs> thank you thank you but, megan Thank you, Megan. Yeah, no, thank you for the welcome. So, Phil, you wanted to bring Reach out if you have community. any further questions. Okay. The community host agreement. Yeah. Um, I wanted to adopt Deerfields instead of ours. And um, I wasn't able to get a copy of Deerfields to show you, however. So, so can we table it until our next meeting? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't think there's any hurry here. Good. Great. Tabled. Let's adjourn it for a week. I'll get it. I have a request out. I think it'll be two weeks. I'm hoping. Yeah, I think we're, oh. that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So one of the, one of the things we had was to whether or not we're going to support uh, armored mud balls as the official sedimentary structure of Massachusetts. Well, we haven't had an application for any other contender, so I'm happy to <laughs> happy to sign this. Yeah, and support I, I, I will confess to being underwhelmed by the armored mud balls as a geological feature. Did However, anyone else make a case, though? <laughs> no, no, and and you know, it's it's definitely that's it. That, that that's the winner. Uh, I, I winner. think if, if Professor Little is proposing this and pushing for this, it's a great idea. Yeah, I'm in I favor. Hear so many things about his course. <laughs> So I'm going to make a motion that we support and sign on to Armored Mud Balls as the official sedimentary structure of Massachusetts. I will. I second that. I hear a second, and I hear Erica and then Phil and I all saying a strong "I." Yes. Are you going to sign the petition or just sign sign saying you support it? There's a petition. Sign the petition. Sign the petition. Well, I yes. I tried to find the wording of the petition today, and I couldn't. And I'm somewhat hesitant to sign a petition that hmm. you don't know what it means, especially if it ends up burdening further development because you have to do some study or something to prove there aren't any mud balls being disturbed. We but, received a lot um, of paper about no. the mud balls. No, there, there, there's not that. It, it, they, it, there's a certificate of support. 
um, that gets signed. That's all there is. That we have to pay for, but we don't have. We don't need the certificate, do we? I mean, we can just. No, it, it's it's sitting on the table here. Um, yeah, this is kind of like the uh, Boston Cream Donut being the official uh, donut of Massachusetts. Yeah, that's an abomination. <laughs> that's an abomination. That's a terrible donut. Sickeningly sweet. We all got the uh, certificate in the mail. Okay, so signing the certificate, but not the petition. That's fine. Great. Items not anticipated. Does anybody have an item not anticipated in 48 hours? I got nothing. I hear none. So, Tom, do you have an update? Uh, just briefly. Um, since Tuesday, I've worked mostly on organizing the town administrator interviews and the necessary follow-up. I've also, of course, been busy with the ongoing transition to bringing our interim town administrator, Ross Perry, into the full swing of town business. He'll be great addition and has already added a great deal of value to the work of the office. It's been a bit challenging to share the work, but we've managed well addressing a wide variety of issues and procedures. Uh, finally, I would like to thank the town for all it has given me including the opportunity to help facilitate the town academy and try to encourage more and better informed participation in town affairs. I may w well look on my time here as the golden days of my career, and it has been a pleasure working with all of the talented and committed residents who make the town the gem of the West County that it is. Thank you again. Tom, I don't know how to deal with you leaving. It, you know, uh, we're hoping to have a, a a party where people can get together and understand your hesitancy with COVID, and maybe sometime this summer we can have you come back to town once you've had your shots and feel you don't mind. You know, people are going to be hugging you, Tom. So, it's going to happen. <laughs> All right, thank you. I do. I do sincerely hope, for your sake, that the grass really is greener in Dalton. So. Any other select board member comment? Even that one, Phil. Uh, just, I mean, this this is, I've only spent a year with you on select board, but I've really appreciated um, everything that I've learned from you. And um, you've definitely made this year um, a very easy transition for me. Everyone told me like, oh my God, don't run for select board. It's going to be horrible. You're going to hate it. <laughs> People keep asking me, how's it going? And I'm like, it's actually totally fine. And I feel like you're a big part of that. So thank you. Oh, well, thank you. You're welcome. And, and I, I just definitely, you know, the a couple of things. First of all, you definitely left this town better than you found it. Second of all, I really, you know, I spent a lot of time, many years training horses, working with horses. The big, the, the my behavior, the quality of a horse that I disliked the most was the ones that spit the bit at the end of the race that didn't that didn't run through to the finish line. And I just really wanted to congratulate you and thank you for running through to the finish line of your time with us and for not spitting the bit. I mean, you, 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 you kept right on going to the end and, um, and that just deserves special, special stickers next to your name for that alone. So thank you. Well, you're welcome. Hey, I, I have till Thursday to flake out, so. <laughs> Well, I hope you yeah. take tomorrow off if you had your COVID shot today. So tomorrow is the second COVID shot. Is, I get my first tomorrow. Oh, excellent. Easy, but, oh. I get my last one on Friday the 30th. So there you go. Very good. It's happening. It's happening. Yep, it is. How about Very mail? exciting. Do we have an email? Um, go ahead. Uh, I, I, I got one piece of email, which I'm, I'm about to forward you from uh, Buckland, which is asking for um, uh, uh, to, to gauge our neighbor's interest pursuing shared services. And so there is a West County shared services survey. And I'm just going to send that right now to everybody 
so you can uh, do with it as you will. Certainly look at it. How about announcements? Any yeah, announcements? I, I do have an announcement. Um, Wednesday, May 5th at 2 o'clock, there's uh, at, the, at the location of the potential possible hopeful future McLeish studio on Pine Hill Road. There's a meeting of a group forming to move that forward. Anybody's Wednesday, interested? At when? Wednesday, May 5th at 2 o'clock. Okay. At the property. At the top of Pine Hill Road. So where is that studio compared to the house? Just as you're going up the hill, you make that last sort of little left turn to get to the to the main house, and it's just off to the right, and it sort of sits up a little bit back to the back. You, when you're a pedestrian, you can see it real easy. When you're a car, you, you tend to be looking at the road and the turn, but it's up off to the right and and above. Sort so, so um, if you got if you got into the to either driveway of either of the houses, the one that Downdale or Yep. whatever then you've gone too far it's a it's it's to the right and before and above the driveway for downdale okay great the stone cabin so the last thing on our agenda is whether we want to actually take a two-week break before our next meeting Well, I think that we can. I mean, because we already scheduled the continuation of the next AMP full meeting, the, yeah. to the Eversource full meeting. I, I would say I'd be more comfortable just giving the chair permission to do so if by Thursday it looks like there's still no need for a meeting on Monday. How does that sound? That sounds good. Sure. Uh, I, I, you know, uh, okay. I would go along with that. I mean, we can call a meet. We can always call a meeting. So Thursday, if we end up having to call a meeting, we can. Yeah. There you go. Otherwise, we just have to sign the warrant articles tomorrow or at some point in the next few days. Yes. Sooner than, and also the mud ball. Uh, yes. Yeah. All sitting on the table. Okay. As our warrant language gets passed around, there might be someone that wants something changed. That's all. Okay. All right, but we can call a meeting if we need to. Yep, yep. So tentatively, we'll say uh, two weeks, which is the 17th. May 10th. No, no, the 10th. No, the 10th. 10th. Yeah. And with that, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay, everyone. Hey, hey before you. Be yeah, go ahead. Before you go, the warrant's going to be posted, I think, tomorrow. So. Well, we have to sign it first, don't we, before it can be posted? Oh, sure, but yeah, yeah. I don't think there's any room, any ex expectations of language changes once you right. vote it tonight and sign it and we get it posted. Right, good. good. Then two weeks it is. <laughs> <laughs> good. Okay. Thank you. Rafa. Okay. All right. See you All in right. two weeks. Next meeting week. is May 10th. May 10th. Yep.